Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Kit Creations. Today we're going to start working on the pinwheel picnic quilt that came in our box. If you received the Stephanie Stitches spring box, you will have received the pattern. Now I've decided that I don't want to make the quilt because I don't need another quilt, so I'm going to make a runner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the squares, on each square, so this one here with the four, and that. Okay, so let's get started. So to go about this, I have to figure out what size I want, but the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my little squares out. It probably won't use two of these because I want to put it on a bookcase that I have here in my hallway. So I'm going to be picking and choosing my colors. Now if you look at this, let's just say that you only wanted to make um, like a, um, let's see, like a placemat. Let's just pretend. And you want to go ahead and use both the pinwheel and this block. All right. So you're going to need two pieces of fabric. So you've got one, two, three, four to make one, uh, excuse me, to make two pinwheels. Because you know, when you have two fabrics, we're going to put our line between one end of the fabric and the up on the diagonal corner and then we're going to sew on the left hand side a quarter inch and on the right hand side a quarter inch I will go ahead and sew a scant I won't do the quarter then we'll cut it down the middle and then we'll have two half square triangles so if you get four fabrics it'll give you one if you get eight fabrics it'll give you two because this is two four six eight fabrics now this is where you're going to play with your colors if you want to for example if I don't want to use these different colors I could actually make a white or a cream and a color. I could do that that way for mine. And I'm trying to think if I have a cream bundle somewhere. I think I have five inch squares. I've got to look for them. Hold on one second. I just had them the other day. All right, I couldn't find my cream, but I did find these. And that's what I'm going to use because I would like to put white and another color. Now also, let me tell you a little bit about this pattern. If you notice on the blocks part, the fabric says 80 pre-cut five inch squares. Or another good advantage is, or fat quarters. I don't want to put the whole thing up there for those that didn't buy it. So you can actually use fat quarters too. And I like that, that you can use one or the other. Because a lot of people will have fat quarters versus the five inch squares. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my colors. And I kind of like this light blue. This is really pretty. I do like blue anyway. So what I'm going to do trying to think here I'm not sure if I want to use I like this light one here that's really really nice so if I made two I would make these definitely and I like this here because this is a light one so when you count these each time you're looking at one set of your squares that's two half square triangles two half square triangles and there's eight of them there Okay, and that's what we need to make the two blocks. And let me pick another color. I'm trying to think, should I make it pink and blue? I kind of like this little writing here they got. This right here. I'll show you here. Let's go down a couple. This is really neat looking. Isn't that pretty neat? The little wording on that. But I don't think I want to make it blue. I think I want to jump down to the other color. So they've got it in pink. And they've got it, I thought they had it in yellow, but it might just be in the cream. Yeah, I don't think I want to use this this one here, the whitish cream, because it'll be too close to this here. Let me show you. I mean, although it will work, and maybe I will use that. Maybe that will look pretty good. I'll go with that color. Let's just go ahead and do two of those. And then if I need the pink, I'm going to set that out too. I just don't want to overpower it with the blue. So let me get the pink one here with the, with the writing on it too. We'll get two of those. Okay, let's do that. Now let me go over here and show you how to mark this in case y'all don't know or you're new to marking your half square triangles. Let's do that next. Alrighty, so you're going to put your right sides together. So that's what I've done here. 
and then I'm going to mark on it diagonally and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the dash mark which is going to be my cutting line. Just make sure your ruler goes off of your fabric on both ends. I'm just marking this and then I'm going to come over a quarter inch to the right and a quarter inch to the left. The line on the ruler is on the left of the line that you're going to no, excuse me. I always make sure that my line on the ruler is to the left of the dash lines that I made down the middle, and then I mark my line so that I've come in closer. And you want to do that. Now let me show you to make how to make one here. Okay, you want to go ahead and mark all yours and get them done, and then we will chain stitch them. And while we're chain stitching them, I'll tell you about that book that I had mentioned <clears throat> early in another video. So the very first thing I'm going to let you know is the name of the book is called Not Perfect, and it's by Elizabeth, and I think you pronounce her last name, Laban. It's L-A-B-A-N. It is a fiction, so it's not true. You know, the stories are all made up. I'm using a 12-inch um, needle, just like I always do. Nothing's different. I'm just using white thread in my bobbin as well as my um, the, the thread itself. So let me go ahead and update you real quick on the people, the characters that are that I've mentioned so far in this book. So it's Tabitha the mother, her daughter Fern, her son Levi. You know, he is older than Fern, just by like three or four years. I think he's about 12, so she's probably uh, eight or eight, eight or nine. So um, then her husband Stuart, and he is at the tail end of the book, but he's, you know, he's mentioned and talked about during the book, but he's not in the book, you know, which you'll understand that. Uh, Toby, the guy that she met at the restaurant, and that is the main, oh, and then her girlfriend, whose name is Rachel. She is also in the book. And then a few other characters, um, I don't remember their names, like the school nurse was mentioned, that kind of thing. But anywho, so the point is that her, but in a nutshell, I'm going to kind of update you in case this is the first video that you're catching right now and you haven't uh, heard me talk about the book or anything, but uh, what it boils down to is her husband has left her. She has no clue why. Uh, they are in an apartment. I think it's, I can't be sure, but I want to say Manhattan, but I'm not sure. But anyway, she, right now she has health insurance she knows of because she's had to take her daughter to the doctor and so she only had to come up with a copay. She does not have food, and when I say she doesn't have food, I mean she's down to the point that she is actually stealing food, but she's keeping track of it because she wants to make sure to pay everybody back. And she's getting it from, for example, she got the little butter pads when her girlfriend took her out to lunch. Uh, anything that's left over on the table, she'll take. When she went to a, um, a coffee shop with Toby, he showed her that they had free food. He took it all, put it in bags they did together, and they went out and fed the homeless, and then she ended up with a loaf of bread at the very tail end. She didn't want to really give any of it away because she's so desperate for food. She's down to one light bulb that works in her kitchen now, so the kitchen's pretty dark except for this one bulb that's working. Uh, the kids being young, they haven't really made any comments, and I had mentioned that I would think that at that age I would have made a comment about why do we don't change our light bulb or why we don't have any food because I know for a fact that when I was that age I got in the refrigerator. I know I did. Well she doesn't have anything in her refrigerator. It's totally empty. Unless she brings it home off of the street there isn't anything. Now she hasn't stooped. Oh, well I shouldn't even say stooped. That's not really nice. She hasn't um, gone through any kind of trash cans to find uh, food like that but for example like the one time I mentioned she had gone to the grocery store and outside the grocery store there was a loaf of bread and I'm sort of like a baguette or um, uh, like a French um, loaf like that sort of thing and it was out there for for one of the customers to come pick it up but nobody had picked it up and she watched it for a minute and she went ahead and took it herself but anyway that's the, the kind of way she's getting food now she's told um, like her daughter for example she told her that it would be better if she washed her hair every other day and didn't condition it. Well, she doesn't have any conditioner, and now she's running out of shampoo trying to figure out where would she be getting any shampoo from. Because you can't just find it like at the, <clears throat> excuse me, like at the grocery store. I mean, not the grocery store, I'm sorry, like at a restaurant. Because a lot of her stuff she gets at a restaurant. When she goes, she went one time with her girlfriend, and while she was out, she went ahead and went into the bathroom and she took a roll of toilet paper. 
and then when she went on an interview, because she's trying to get herself a job, is what she's trying to do. She has not worked since she was married, but she's trying to get a job. She's gone for about three of them. So far, nobody has called her back. She went for this, uh, this, and the advantage of it is nine times out of ten, <clears throat> when she goes, they're actually like, um, I want to say like a luncheon type um, interview. She went to this one that was actually a breakfast interview, and it was for a, I think it was a pest control company. And she went and sat down at the table, and the guy was having um, pancakes. So he asked her what she would like. She said she would have uh, pancakes, just like he was. Well, when he had his, he, hit, he excused himself and he went to the bathroom. And when he did, she took the little bitty containers of the syrups and the jelly and stuff like that off of the table. And then he came back and she noticed that he'd only eaten one of his. And she wanted to grab the extra one so bad so she could take it home to the kids. But she didn't do that. And she went ahead and she ate her own. And then when the interview was over, she was a little bit embarrassed by it because she, she really, really wanted this job. She thought she could work it. It's a receptionist job is what it was. And um, she's said that she was real good at setting up things like that. Now, she had uh, started running her own business at one time, but that fell through due to something that had happened. I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. But then the next thing you know, she got on the elevator. And oh, as she was walking out, this is what kind of struck me as odd. So as she's walking out, now this man who's interviewing her is a very young guy. He's like in his 20s. And when she got done and she said she really, really liked it, he said, uh, I understand. And she goes... Well, you didn't like the pancake. And he goes, yeah, I did. He goes, I hate to say this. He goes, but my dad make, made me do these interviews back to back. So as soon as I'm finished with you, I have another inter interview. And she goes, oh, okay. So she went ahead and got up because he didn't get up when she was getting up. When she gets ready to go right outside the doorway of this dining room, because it was a really nice place, she saw the next guy come in and he had asked her the same exact question. I think the question was, oh, what was the worst thing that you've ever seen in an establishment? That's what the question was. And she and the man asked this guy that had come for the interview the same question. So she left and she thought, darn it, I didn't get that interview. Well, somehow she got herself turned around and she got into the elevator. And when she did, she was just pushing buttons. Well, when she pushed the button, it went up instead of down. So she just pushed to get off on the first floor that she could, you know, when it was going up. So anyway, it stopped on number six. She gets out, and then she's got herself all turned around. She thought, well, I'll just go and use the steps to go down. But while I'm up here, she goes, surely these people have, they have made and room service and everything. So she's looking around for the cart, and she sees the cart, and she doesn't see the person, you know, that goes in and out of the room and everything. So she goes over there, and she starts grabbing, you know, the, like the little soaps and the shampoo, the conditioner, some lotion, and she puts all that in her purse. She always carries a big purse with her. And I think she took a couple of rolls of toilet paper. I'm not sure at this venture. But anyway, so she goes ahead. She goes home. She distributes this throughout her house. And then she puts them on the shelf to keep back. Her, she had noticed that her daughter's hair was getting greasy. <laughs> this is where that came up at. So every time she's out, she's looking for something different. Whatever she's in need of to have at the moment. All I could think about was they must have mentioned the light bulbs. Oops, I just did that on the same exact side. Flip that over. But anyway, I'm, all I could think was, well, why doesn't she find somewhere to find a light bulb? <clears throat> I mean, you can find, I don't know where the heck you can find a light bulb. I don't know, as one would have been on a cart, but I, I would assume one would be on one of those little carts that the women have in the hallway. Maybe not. Maybe that's maintenance nowadays compared to the um, little cart. But anyway, well, um, I'm trying to think what all I've told you guys. Um, I told you about the coffee place that she went to where her son saw her with Toby, that man. I told you about that. I think that was one of the last things that I mentioned in my last video. Okay, let's cut these. Let's go ahead and we're going to cut all of these open. Then I told you about her going for an interview at one of those. It was sort of like a home health care type situation. And she had been confused. Although, she, I mean, she hadn't been confused, but the man that was helping her, who was supposed to be interviewing, got her confused with one of the aides and sent her out on a job. And she met a woman named Nora, who just happens to have the same name as her mother. Now, she loved her mother and everything herself. But the problem with her mother is that about six years ago, her mother got sick. And when she got sick, she started getting dementia. But she had more than just that. 
<coughs> because it got to the point where she was having to give her mother morphine and she and her husband and her two children were actually staying with her mother towards the tail end. And she was, from lack of sleep, she was getting confused about how much she was giving her mother. And she kind of thought that she had actually given her mother too much. And she had the guilt of that um, going on, eating at her. Uh, as this book is going on, you know, she's remembering things about her mom. And uh, in her mind, like when she's doing other stuff. And what brought this back is that when she had gone into, uh, she went ahead and went to Nora, which was the lady, the elderly lady they sent her to. They sent her to this home and told her that this lady needed care all the time. Well, when she went to Nora's, and I told you this part, where she wanted to play a game and they played Monopoly and there was real money in the Monopoly game and not fake money. Well, so going forward in this story, she went over to her place a couple of times. Now, she's not hired by this company, so she's just going there, okay? So she was getting free food because Nora was making the muffins. But anyway, along with this money, she thought that she knew that she couldn't take that money, but she was there, went to visit her one time, and when she did, she stepped away to go to the bathroom, and what had happened was the second, I think it was about the second or third visit that she went, hold on one second, I'm going to go ahead and continue the story while I iron these open. Now, I didn't say to, own, to iron these open any specific way, so all I'm doing is ironing them open towards, I'm going ahead and I'm pressing my seam, and then I'm opening them towards the fabric, the, the non-white fabric, let's put it that way. But on this second, I believe, second or third visit, I don't recall, but she said that she wanted to know if she wanted a edible. And Rachel wasn't sure she understood what she said. And she goes, yeah, she goes, there are caramels up in the little candy dish. And she says, sure, she really wouldn't have something like this. And she goes, they're she goes, they're called edibles? And she goes, yeah. She goes, oh, you mean that you can eat these caramels? And she goes, well, yeah, but they're edibles. And so she wasn't quite sure she was hearing her right. So she goes into the cabinet. She gets out the caramel. It looks just like your regular everyday caramel, you know, when you make a caramel apple and you melt your caramels down. She goes, well, she must be confused because this is that lady that's 79 years old now. Nora is her name. And she just figures she's confused by it. And she goes, yeah. She goes, uh, nobody else has done this with me, but... I think you would like to do it. And so the lady goes, okay. She's thinking, well, nothing of it. So she takes two and she goes, now be careful because you only want to take a little bit at the very beginning if you're not used to it. And she goes, okay. And she's pacifying Nora is what she's doing. So she went ahead and she gave Nora one and, and Nora nibbled on it and everything. And they went in and sat down and started playing the game, the Monopoly game again. And so while she's there, all of a sudden she started getting this buzz and she went, oh my God, these really are edible she goes how, why would this woman have it so then she starts questioning her and she goes well what would be the reason that you'd have these and she goes you know these are like for medicinal uh reasons she goes because of my aches and pains and things like that and she goes i take them every now and then and she goes oh okay well she went out to the kitchen and she went ahead and put an extra one in her pocket and when they were out there uh she said to her let me make you some muffins again because every time that rachel went to Norris, she always made muffins now she wasn't eating them herself, nor was strictly making them just for Rachel. So Rachel goes, um, she's thinking to herself, my daughter would probably like chocolate chip. She goes, well, I think chocolate chip ones would be good today. So she went ahead and made them. And then she says, now, can you keep an eye on them? Because now that I've eaten this little bit of caramel, I might go to sleep. And she goes, yeah, I can keep track of them. So, of course, they're all both in the other room relaxed and Nora falls asleep. Well, then all of a sudden, um, she, of course, she'd forgotten about them. Hold on one second. Now it's a matter of how do you want to lay them down there? Do you want to put two of the same? But I think I'm going to mix them up and put four of each of the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the blue in the opposite over here. This blue here. And then this one here, like that. See how it's going to go? I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and we're going to connect two of them. And then we'll connect the two together. So let's do that. Okay, now you want to be sure and nestle your seams when you do this. Because we're going to end up opening these in the middle. So I will show you that when I get to that part. I'm just going to make sure that I'm, I've got them nestled. And the way that I ironed these, this one worked this time around. I don't know about the next times around. But anyways, of course she had forgotten about the brownies. I mean the brownies. The muffins cooking. 
but she smelt them just in time, so she jumped up real quick and went ahead and got the muffins. Thank heavens. But she went ahead and she just gathered them up and took them home and left Nora sleeping on the couch. She did note that one of the times while she was there visiting, she had to go into the bathroom. And when she went into the bathroom, there was this great big huge jar. Now, I would not know how big a jar that would be. But just thinking about the way she talked about this jar, it made me think of the, you know, a lot of people take their change and they put them in a jar, those great big huge jars, bigger than a quart jar. And that made me think, but then, it, but it's like, well, it couldn't be that big because it was sitting on her bathroom sink. So I was thinking a quart jar or a, a oversized a jar like a cookie jar would be or something like that and it was stuffed I mean stuffed cramped with money all kinds of different denominations 10 20s 50s hundred and at this point when Nora saw that she decided to take a few bucks out of it because she was really getting desperate now and when I say desperate what had happened was that her child not only did her daughter end up in the hospital, her son ended up in the hospital, and when she ran, they ran her insurance card, it would not go through, and she was really, really falling apart. All right, this is what it should look like. I had that thing sewed wrong, so I had to take it back out. But it should be so that the two points come at the and meet in the middle, just like this, okay? And then I have my blues opposite, and then the other color opposite. And then you're gonna put this together, and you're going to sew it down here and you're going to be careful about this middle piece now before you mark these you're going to iron them flat open and use your little stick if you need to and then just mark them just make sure that you put your line above the mark of where they meet so that you don't take off your tip and I go ahead and I mark both of them and you're going to take your pen you're going to put it through this spot right here and you want to put it through there and you want to look at it when it comes out on the other end the other side I should say turn it this way so that you can see it came out right above the top right there's the tip of that and then you want to put it in right there And then it came out on the back side. And that's all you do. You're putting them together, you're pinning them, and you're sewing them. Just be real, real careful when you do it. And I'll flip it over and take a look at it. And it looks like I went across the line. Let me open it up and look at it before I even go on to make sure I didn't take my tips off. I did not. So now I can go ahead and finish this. And like I said, that um, we find out why he had left her, abandoned her, whatever you want to call it. But I don't want to ruin it for you, so I'm not going to tell you why he did it. But when you read it, I mean, you can sympathize, I guess, with him, but you can sympathize with her. But I can't say any more because I don't want to be giving it away. I mean, you can speculate throughout the whole thing as to what you think the answer is. But in the meantime, that guy Toby that she met, I believe she's actually fell in love with him. So like I said, um, the name of that book is called Not Perfect by Elizabeth. L-A-B-A-N is her last name. If you're interested in it. And you, I think it's about 300 and something. It's under 400 pages, so it's not a... A long read. It's got 22 chapters. First, we're looking at our line. So it went across there, and you can tell it did not go below. So that looks good. Let's open it up. Let's see if we can look at it. It looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to iron it open. Now you can tell that I've ironed it totally open, but this is where I don't like. Let me show you right here. Turn it sideways a little bit. See how that's not even a quarter of an inch because there's just not enough fabric. That I don't like. But you can always go over it again if you want to. And then there's the center of it. So now I'm going to make another one of these and then I'm going to make two of the four inch, uh, the, not the four inch, the four blocks together. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, so I went ahead and changed these out because I didn't want to put white with them. I wanted to put 
uh, blue and pink for the colors of this, these blocks. So that's what I'm doing. And then I wanted to say a little bit more about that book. I felt like um, Rachel really, not Rachel, I'm sorry, Tabitha really grew as a person in that book. Because when she first started out, I felt like she was, I wouldn't say ignorant, but I guess more protective. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Um, maybe naive a little bit, but um, she didn't have to make any decisions or anything. Her husband made all of her decisions for her. She never had to do anything on her own. And then once she realized she could, because throughout the book, she always questioned everything that she did, thinking that if Stuart was there, she wouldn't have to do it. And she wouldn't have to be questioning it. She wouldn't have to be making the decision. She wouldn't have to be thinking whether it was right or wrong and all that. And if he was there, he would just be making all of that. And she wouldn't have to be doing it. And she felt so much better about it. But then as time went by and she realized that she could do the decisions and they were the right decisions for her family. She cared about her kids. That's when she felt like she was, I felt like she became a stronger person. I kind of really liked that book. I haven't read anything um, from that author before. That was the first time I'd read anything from her. Go ahead and cut all these apart and iron them open and then we're going to sew them now. Okay, nestle your one piece on that in the middle. Go ahead and sew it. And we'll take our measurements for these blocks and find out what size we want to make them. Okay, so my blocks are each eight and a half. I've cut my sashing two and a half by eight and a half because I'm matching it up with my block. And now I'm going to put the sashing on. I'm not making little cornerstone blocks. Let me pin this so I have the enough of it. There we go. So all I'm doing is putting them on the top and the bottom. So I'll start out at the between the squares because the very top and the bottom will have its own. And here's where I normally end up putting too many so I've got to really be paying attention. <laughs> so that I don't put one on the top and one on the bottom and I have to turn around and take them apart. So after I've done this piece, I'll take my next square, which is the four squares together, and I'm going to attach them to the sashing. But let me iron my sashing first. So I'm going to sew these two together, and then I'm going to iron them, and then I'm going to show you what I've got going here so you can have an idea. Okay, so this is what I have. I have my eight and a half inch block. I put my sashing and then my next eight and a half inch block. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process with the next two blocks and the sashing between them. And now I'm putting the sashing between the two. Now I'm attaching these two and the way that I'm gonna attach them, you'll see it when I'm finished, is I'm putting the two last squares together. And the reason being that I will put something in the middle of this and so I wanted them each going towards each other. I have the sashing laid out here on the side and I went ahead and I marked everywhere that I needed to mark, as you can see right there. And this is the side that I'm gonna sew on. So let's do that first. And now on to the last side before we trim the end is off. So now it's time to cut this. So the measurement of that is supposed to be two and a half. So I'm going to cut it like that. Let's see if I'm in the camp. Yep. Yeah. Same here, like that. And both ends. And then I'll show it to you and what it looks like. It's really I laid it nice. out here on the ironing board so I can kind of do a little pan of it because my phone is hooked up. Alrighty, so this is what I was talking to you about a little bit earlier where I put these two together 
because I'll put a centerpiece in the middle of that on the bookshelf so each of the ends have the pinwheel on it down there. So it's a little bit smaller than my ironing board, but that's about what my bookshelf is. It's shorter than that. So that's what I was trying to make it for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you all next time. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed this pattern that Stephanie gave us. Bye-bye.